All right, we are going to talk today about a different pattern of inheritance than we have seen up to this point. So far, we have only seen alleles that are either dominant or recessive. And today we're going to learn about what's called codominance. So in codominance, alleles, just like it sounds, are both dominant. That means that if you have a heterozygous organism, both traits will be fully expressed in the phenotype. This kind of codominance does not result in blended alleles, so phenotypes that are a mixture. Instead, it ends up with both alleles being fully expressed. Uh, because this is a different kind of inheritance than we have seen before, we use a different kind of allele notation. In codominance, we represent both of the codominant alleles with their own capital letter. So an example of this that might help you understand codominance a little bit is the idea of hair color or fur color in horses. So certain horses uh, can produce red fur, and red fur is codominant in some varieties of horses with white fur. So you can see that because these are codominant genes, we use a capital R for the red fur and a capital W for the white fur. Uh, here is a example of what it would look like if we had a codominant horse. We call the outcome of the heterozygous individual roan. Uh, you can see in this picture that this horse has both white and red fur at the same time. Both are expressed in this individual. So this is a kind of interesting pattern of inheritance that we haven't seen before because in codominance you get a brand new phenotype. So the genotype possibilities are about like what we've seen before but it's the existence of a new phenotype which has both of the dominant traits showing up that's that's so interesting. So if you take a look over on the left here, if we have a red horse, a red horse would always have two copies of the dominant red gene. A white horse, horse would always have two copies of the dominant white gene, and if those are crossed, all of their offspring would be roan. So they get one copy of the red gene, one copy of the white gene, and they end up having both red hairs on their body and white hairs at the exact same time. So they have both colors of hair. Notice they're not striped, they're not polka dot, they just have both colors of hair all over their body. Um, if you take a roan horse and you cross it with a second roan horse so that you have heterozygote crossed with heterozygote, notice the Punnett square. Each of these can give either the big R gene or the big W gene and in that case you can get the offspring 25% red here, 50% roan, these two, and 25% white. Those are the possible outcomes if you have a cross between two roan horses. So remember, in codominance, the heterozygous genotype means that both alleles, alleles will be fully expressed in the phenotype. So a second kind of cool example of this is a disease that humans get called sickle cell anemia. This is a blood cell disease and it affects the shape of the red blood cells. So if you are a normal person, then you have genes big N, big N, meaning you get two copies of the gene that makes norm normal red blood cells. If you have two copies of the dominant sickle cell gene, then instead of making nice round red blood cells, you make these kind of moon shape or sickle shape red blood cells. And those are not as good at carrying oxygen on the hemoglobin. Uh, and so these people uh, tend to be not very healthy. They tend to be pretty sick. And then you can have the heterozygous individual, which would have one copy of the normal gene, one copy of the sickle cell gene. And these people would be what we call carriers. 
they have the gene for sickle cell. They even have some cells, some of their red blood cells that are sickle cell, but they are not sick like the individuals that have two copies of the sickle cell allele. Uh, so let's look at a problem with that. Um, imagine that we have a cross between an individual with sickle cell anemia and another who is a carrier but not sick. Go ahead and pause the video and try this Punnett square. Okay, if you set this up correctly, you would have had an individual uh, that has sickle cell anemia. Their genes would be big S, big S. And a person who is not uh, sick with the disease but is a carrier, their genes would be uh, big, S, big N, big S. So here again is the carrier. Here's the individual who was uh, actually sick with sickle cell disease. Um, inside the Punnett square, you should get these results. Uh, that represents genotypes big N, big S 50% of the time and big S, big S 50% of the time, which means they would be the new phenotype that we have never seen before, which is called a carrier, which is the heterozygous individual 50% of the time, and the sick individual 50% of the time. In addition to codominance, another new thing that we haven't ever seen before is that sometimes organisms within a population can have more than two possible alleles. Now remember any individual is only going to have two alleles but within a population you could sometimes have more than two alleles. So an interesting example of this is rabbits. Uh, rabbit fur comes in lots of varieties and there are four different possible alleles that uh, rabbit, rabbits can inherit from their parents that can determine what kind of actual fur color they will have, what phenotype they will have. So there's an allele for brown fur that's dominant over everything else. There's a allele for chinchilla colored fur and that's incompletely dominant which we haven't learned yet over two other alleles Himalayan and albino. We'll learn incomplete dominance another time. Um, and then Himalayan, that fur color is dominant over albino, and albino, or white, is recessive to all the other colors. So, again, every rabbit is only going to get two alleles, but they have four possibilities in, in the population of rabbits. Uh, let's take a look at a human example that involves both multiple alleles and codominance. This is the example of human blood type. So you probably have heard people say before, hey, what blood type are you? Uh, a lot of people are type O. There are also people that are type A, type B, and type AB. In addition to this, lots of times you'll hear people say positive or negative. That is talking about a second thing involved with blood typing called the RH factor, and you'll learn a little bit more about that in the lab that you do. Uh, but for today, we're going to just talk about type A, type B, type AB, and type O blood. So... Uh, these different blood types are based on genes or alleles and we can we can use shorthand for those alleles A, B, and O uh, or in the book you'll see that the, the proper way of writing this is I and then a superscript A to represent the allele for type A blood I superscript B to represent the allele for type B blood or a lowercase i to represent the allele for type O blood. So you can probably tell from this type O is the recessive allele because it's getting the, the lowercase letter and type A and type B are codominant alleles. Both of these are dominant. So let's take a look at how this works. Um, blood cells have little proteins on the surface and those proteins show up on different spots on the surface. So someone that has type A blood has a surface protein called antigen A in specific spots on their red blood cells. Someone that has type B blood has a different antigen called antigen B in specific spots on their red blood cells. Someone that is type AB has both type A antigens and type B antigens on their red blood cells, but in different spots. And then someone that is type O blood doesn't have any surface proteins on their, on their red blood cells. So in lab, you're going to learn about um, 
the rules for blood typing, who can give blood to whom. So it's, it's uh, based on this idea of codominance and multiple alleles. So A and B are, are codominant, um, and there's meaning they're both dominant over type O blood. So here are all the possible genotypes. So these are showing the genotypes on the left and the and the resultant phenotype so what kind of blood the individual would have so if you have genes big a big a then you have type a blood if you have genes big b big b you have type b blood big a big b you have type a b blood a o since a is dominant you still have type a blood b o since b is dominant you have type b blood and only if you get o o do you end up with type o blood um, so because of those surface proteins, uh, certain people can only donate blood to other specific individuals. So anyone that has type A blood can give blood to other type A people um, and can get blood from anyone that has either type A or type O. Someone that's type B blood can give can get blood rather from anyone that's type B or type O. Notice type O can go in any of in, into any person because type O doesn't have any of those surface proteins, and it's those surface proteins that trigger an immune response and and that cause harm to a person. Uh, so someone that has type AB blood could get get blood from anyone that has type A blood, type B blood, type AB blood, or type O blood, and anyone that has type O blood can only get blood from someone else that has type O blood. So because of this we say that type AB blood is the universal acceptor because they can get blood from anyone with any blood type and we say that type O is the universal donor because they can give blood to anyone with any blood type. Uh, so how do we show uh, these blood type problems in a Punnett square? Well try this one out. Show the cross between a mother who has type O blood and a father who has type AB blood. So I'll give you just a minute. Go ahead and give that a try. Okay, so you should have started by deciding what the genotypes are for the mother and the father. So the mother with type O blood would have to have genotype OO. Remember, you could also represent this with little i, little i, if you prefer that. Um, the father with type AB blood would have genotype AB. So you put those gametes on the outside, and then you fill in the Punnett square, and then you summarize what you've learned here by figuring out the genotype and, and phenotype probabilities. So uh, this would be 50% AO genotype and 50% BO phenotype, excuse me, genotype. And then for the phenotypes, that would be 50% type A blood and 50% type B blood. Notice you do not say type AO blood or type BO blood down here. AO is the genotype. The phenotype is type A blood. All right, try the next one. Give you just a minute for this one. Show the cross between a mother who is heterozygous for blood type or excuse me, for type B blood, and a father who is heterozygous for type A blood. So think about what heterozygous means, set that Punnett square up, and go ahead and fill it out. All right, correct answer. The father who's heterozygous for type A blood would be type AO. The mother who's heterozygous for type B blood would be type BO. And when you fill out that Punnett square, you get these four different possibilities. Notice there are four different genotypes. That's the first time we've ever seen that happen. Four different possible genotypes here, each of them 25%. And there are also four different possible phenotypes. Uh, notice again, this is the first time that has happened where we have seen four different phenotypes. Um, and that can that is a possibility because we have multiple alleles and we have codominance in these problems. All right, good luck with the lab and with the homework. Make sure you check in with me if you have any questions. Thanks.